Paladin Dance. If you have the time to talk now, I'd still like to know what you think about Scribe Halen. She's as dedicated as they come. A real team player. I couldn't agree more. But I wasn't looking for an evaluation of her performance as a scribe. I wanted to know what you thought of Halen as a person. This isn't like you, Dance. Are you going to tell me what this is all about? I suppose I'm beating around the bush because I don't normally find these discussions easy to handle. I'll try and get right to the point. The truth is, I'm worried about her. Since you and I are getting along so well, I felt like I could confide in you about it, to get your honest opinion. I appreciate that you value my opinion so highly. Tell me what's on your mind. Let me explain everything from the beginning. A few months before you found us, one of my men was shot multiple times by raiders. Halen stayed by that night's side for two days straight, without sleep, fighting to keep him alive. But he was on a slow decline. I decided that his suffering needed to end and ordered Halen to administer an overdose of painkillers so he could die with dignity even though I'm certain she wanted to continue fighting for that knight's life. <sighs> she injected him without question. She did the right thing. Of course she did. But the decision whether or not to ease that soldier's suffering isn't the point here. The point is what happened later that same evening. Halen approached me while I was on watch. She didn't say a word, but I could tell something was wrong. After what felt like an eternity, she collapsed into my arms, crying. I didn't know what to do, so I just held her for a while. A few minutes later, she stopped, kissed me on the cheek, and simply said, thank you, before heading back into the police station. Right then it hit me. Maybe I pushed her too hard. I ordered her to ignore her instincts, to do something her medical training told her was wrong. That's why I'm worried about her, and for that matter, everyone under my command. Halen will be fine. It's you that I'm worried about. Me? I see what you're getting at. I guess I never thought of it that way. Look, four soldiers. Over half of my team are gone. Each one of them died because of decisions that I made. I understand the risks that come with the job. We all do. But how can anyone have confidence in me anymore? Hell, how can I have confidence in myself? The way you held... Halen, tells me you care about them, and they care about you. I... I never thought of it that way. Well, it looks like things have taken a turn. I signed up to be your sponsor, so I teach you everything that I know. But it looks like I'm the one that needed the lesson today. All joking aside, I'm pleased that we had this discussion. And with all the problems you're facing, you still took the time to listen. It's comforting to know that I can speak to you as more than just your commanding officer. I'm here anytime you need me, Dance. Good. I may take you up on that someday. Anyway, thanks for letting me get that off my shoulders. I think it's been weighing on me more than I realized. I'm only sorry you had to see me at my worst, instead of at my best. Excuse me. You, uh, you ready to talk now? I promise it won't take long. I hope nothing's wrong. Wrong? No, not at all. I've been waiting for the right moment to talk to you, and I suppose this is as good a time as any. After helping me get Duncan's cure for medtech, I figured I owe you something. And I always pay my debts. Here, I wanted you to have this. I know a carved toy soldier is a strange reward for risking your life, but this one's special. It means a lot to me. If it's special to you, then it's a thoughtful gift. Thank you. You're welcome. Just be sure you don't lose it. My wife Lucy gave this to me right after we met. I, uh, I told her I was a soldier and she made it for me. Never could bring myself to tell her the truth. That I was just a hired killer. And the soldier story was the best thing I could come up with. I didn't want to lose her because of what I was. I'm sure you had good intentions. I had a feeling you'd get where I was coming from. It doesn't really matter anymore. She died a few years back. We made the mistake of holding up in a metro station one night. We didn't know that the place was infested with ferals. They were on her before I could even fire a shot. Ripped her apart right in front of me. There was
was nothing I could do. Took everything I had to escape with Duncan in my arms. Maybe it would have been better if we died there with her. You may have lost your wife, but you saved your son. That counts for something. Maybe. I don't know anymore. Damn, I miss Lucy. No matter how bad things got, she was always there with a shoulder to lean on. It gave me... Well, it, it gave me the courage I needed to press ahead. To never give up. When she died, I thought that feeling was gone forever. Then I met you. You have the world's problems in your back, and here you are helping me with mine. Lending me your shoulder like Lucy did. I just want you to know how much your friendship means to me. Hey, man. Only best friends can share feelings like that with each other. And I aim to keep it that way. Anyway, thanks for hearing me out. Taking all that weight off my shoulders makes the journey a little easier, if you know what I mean. Speaking of which, it's about time we got back on the road, don't you think? Hey, Hancock. Hey, mind if we talk now? Of course. What's up? Look, I uh, needed to mention just you taking care of Bobby. I ain't proud of having to put you through that. That sort of dictatorial shit ain't usually my style. She tried to dupe us both. Dealing with her was the right move. True, but it doesn't change the fact that she's out of the picture because of us. Hell, that sort of bulls the whole reason I became mayor in the first place. Some ass named Vic ran the town for I don't know how long before that. Guy was scum. Used us drifters like his own personal piggy bank. He had this goon squad he'd use to keep people in line. Every so often he'd let them off the leash, go blow off some steam on the populace at large. Folks with homes could lock their doors, but us drifters, we got it bad. There was one night... Some drifter said something to them. They cracked him open like a can of cram on the pavement. And we all just stood there, did nothing. You can't blame yourself. Sounds like you were outmatched. Probably would have killed you too. You're right, but it was still spineless. I felt like less than nothing. Afterwards, I got so high, I blacked out completely. When I finally came to, I was on the floor of the old state house right in front of the clothes of John Hancock. John Hancock, first American hoodlum and defender of the people. I might have still been high, but those clothes spoke to me, told me what I needed to do. I smashed the case, put him on, started a new life as Hancock. After that, I went clean for a bit, got organized, convinced Cleo to loan me some hardware. Got a crew of drifters together and headed out into the ruins. Started training. Next time Vic's boys went on their tear, we'd be ready for them. Why not try and reason with Vic instead of creating a militia? Hey, if I thought for a second that would work, I would have tried. Or at least, thought about trying. So, the night of, we all got loaded. Let Vic's boys get good and hammered. And burst from the windows and rooftops where we'd been hiding. They never even saw it coming. We didn't have to fire a shot. We didn't have to, but we sure fucking did. It was a massacre. Once we'd mopped up, we strolled right into Vic's quarters in the state house, wrapped a rope around his neck, and threw him off the balcony. And there I am, gun in hand, draped in Hancock's duds, looking at all the people of Good Neighbor assembled below. I had to say something. That first time I said him, they didn't even feel like my words. Of the people, for the people, was my inaugural address. Became Mayor Hancock of Good Neighbor that day. And from then on, I vowed I'd never stand by and watch ever again. And you're never gonna have to. We'll take care of the Commonwealth together. Good. I just hope you get where I was coming from. I ain't out to bring harm to anyone that didn't earn it. Though I'm getting the distinct idea you got the same plan. Well, you probably heard enough of me running my mouth for one day. You wanna get moving? So, seems you know how to hold your own. I'd had my doubts when we first hit the road. Uh, thanks. You're not so bad yourself. I never get many complaints. It's just real rare these days. Find someone who's not willing to take things the way they're handed to them. 
Too many good folks not willing to get their hands dirty. And too many assholes taking advantage of it. Look at what happened to Diamond City. Before McDonough took over, it was a half-decent place to live. A little stricter than I usually go for, but not terrible. I thought he and I had a pretty happy childhood. But then he decides he's going to try and get elected with his anti-ghoul crusade. Mankind for McDonough. Before you know it, you got families with kids lining up to drag folks they call neighbor out of their homes and throw them to the ruins. How could they do something like that? There'd always been a pretty big gulf between the folks living in the stands and folks down on the field. McDonough ran on it because he thought enough of those upper stands assholes would vote for him. Guess he was right. I remember storming into his office above the stands after the inauguration speech. He was just standing there, staring out the window, watching as the city turned on the ghouls. He didn't even look at me. Just said, I did it, John. It's finally mine. Should have killed him right there, but I don't think it would have changed anything. Instead, I pleaded with him, begged him to call it off. He said he couldn't. He had nothing against the ghouls. He was just carrying out the will of the people. And he couldn't betray the voters. And then he smiled. That hideous fucking mile-long smile. He never smiled like that when we were kids. I didn't even recognize him. He murdered those ghouls. Him and that whole damn city. I still wasn't a ghoul at this point, so I didn't have to leave. But I couldn't bring myself to stay in that cesspool after that. I'd been sneaking off the good neighbor for years to get decent chems, so I knew the safe routes. I managed to track down a couple of the families, lead them there, but most couldn't get used to the good neighbor lifestyle. I brought them food for a couple of weeks, but after a while, they just disappeared. Folks in Diamond City signed their death warrants, and all the good people were willing to just sit by and watch. I felt like I was the only one who saw how screwed up things truly were. We couldn't just pretend things were fine. Still feel that way. Or I did. Until I met you. I know I run my mouth, but having someone who sees the world for what it is and is willing to do something about it, it's meant a lot to me. I feel damn lucky to have you as a friend. I feel exactly the same, Hancock. It's been a hell of a ride thus far. Then here's to a long road with plenty of ammo. Well, thanks for hearing me out. You probably weren't looking for a history lesson, were ya? You, you want to hit the road? Hey, you, uh, got a sec? I need you to hear something. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, I, I appreciate it. It's just, being out here with you, it's made me realize, most of my life to this point, I've been running out on the good things I got. I skipped out on my family, my life in Diamond City, took up with you just to get out a good neighbor. Hell, running from myself is what made me into, into a damn ghoul. But being here with you for the first time in my life, things have just felt right. And running is the furthest thing from my mind. I mean, I left Good Neighbor thinking I was going to just sharpen up the old killer instinct. But whether it's fate or destiny or just goddamn coincidence, I ended up with someone like you. I turned one of the nastiest settlements in the Commonwealth into a refuge for the lost. I thought I'd done something I could hang my hat on. But being out here with you, it's made me realize just how small time I'd been thinking. And that maybe all my running, for my life, myself, maybe it wasn't such a bad thing after all. You may have run, but you always ran for a reason, Hancock. Been trying to convince myself of that for a long time. But hearing that coming from someone like you, I don't know if you understand what that means to me. So let me get to the point. Throwing in with you has been the best decision I've ever made. It's like I found a part of myself I never realized was missing, which happens sometimes when you're a ghoul. If I hadn't taken up with you, I'd probably be in a gutter somewhere, getting gnawed on by rad roaches. You have been one hell of a friend. I know the feeling. You're a damn fine man, Hancock. I'm lucky to have you at my side. And God help any of them who get in our way. Well, 
I know I could stand to listen about how wonderful I am for the rest of my days, but it's probably worth us hitting the road. Thanks for hearing me out, friend. Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my 100% walkthrough of Fallout 4. I hope you're all doing well. I know that I am, and today we're going to be making our way to the Parsons State Insane Asylum. But before we do, let's go ahead and talk about why we are over here by Sanctuary. And the main reason why is because we're going to get the cry later today. And then we're going to head over to Saugus Ironworks and start making our way over to the Parsons State Insane Asylum. Sorry, I didn't mean for my camera to start rolling like that. Let's go ahead and push the big red button. And then we're going to step on the pad here. Go ahead and turn our pit boy on. We're going to come over here and we're going to lock pick the cry later case. Yes. Sweet. We got a level. Bingo. We'll pick up the cry later. And then let's go ahead and put a level in real quick. We are going to put it into, I say toughness. And then next we'll do science and that'll be it for science. And we can focus on toughness and then lock pick, not lock picking every single time, pickpocketing. I don't know why I keep trying to call that lock picking. Let's go back up to sanctuary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to fast travel over to Saugus Ironworks. Let's pull our weapon out just in case we run into any baddies. I'm going to take the side path here. Follow this straight out to this makeshift path. And then southeast over here, Jake should be over here. Let's go ahead and talk to him for a second. I'm so nervous. I, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Here goes nothing. What the? 
boy, I told you that if Abraham, you ever showed your face on? here again, I... Is that my boy come home? What? Jake's back? Oh, thank God. Papa, please. I, I know I screwed up pretty big. I, I thought if I joined up, I could keep them from raiding our farm. I didn't. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't care what you thought. I told you. Abraham Francis Finch, that's enough. Mama, if... Shut up, Jake. If I hear anything out of either of you, you'll both be peeling potatoes for the next year. I've watched you two go at it for years and tried to let you sort it out for yourselves. Abraham, your son is a grown man. And if you expect him to act like one, then you'd better stop treating him like a child. Jake, your father and I have been out there, and we know it can be dangerous. We just want to make sure you're prepared. There, it's over. And if I hear another word about it from either of you, so help me. She's right. I've been a fool. There's no way I can thank you enough. Here's something for your help. I think you should hang on to that sword. It'd put a smile on Granddad's face to know it was being used to help people. Can we trade a few things? So now we can make the Finch's farm a settlement if we like. What we're going to do is head east. Right over there we can see a little building. We're going to be heading over there. If you want, you can go over to this, I guess, marina. It doesn't really look like a marina. It's like more kind of like a diner. You can go over there, discover that if you like. Dog meat found an enemy. Congratulations, dog meat. You found a blowfly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some radix and we're going to swim across this channel and go over to this building. It's not going to blow up. All right, cool. Whatever, be glitchy. So over here, let's go ahead and turn on our pit boy. We can see a code on the wall, 0451. Now, zero is actually, I guess, representing 10. I don't know how you're supposed to figure out this means 10, but 451 is all correct. So what we need to do is come over here to this panel and put in 10. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to put in four. So that'll be one, two, three, four. And then over here, five, one, two, three, four, and then five, and then one. That will open up this door, and we can get a pretty beast uh, pistol or revolver yes. called the Gainer. Grab that skull because I have a problem. And then we'll grab the fusion core. Now let's go ahead and exit the pump house. We're going to come up top here. Head east for just a moment. We're going to follow this road around. If you want to discover that, you can as well. I'm not going to bother. Oh, wow. Something went down there. One thing I will discover real quick, though, is this Junkyard Hub City, I think it's called. Oh, Hub City Auto Wreckers. And then we're going to head east. Well, more northeast. Just kind of follow the tower that's up top. Or pylon. Pylon tower. I don't know what to call it. Antenna. Oh, mole rat. A lot of times you'll get an event over here, so be prepared for that. 
Try not to step by the irradiated barrels. I think this is an event, so normally those barrels aren't here. I don't know why I just used that right away. We're going to have to use some more anyways. And I think that's more of an antenna than it is a pylon. But who knows? I could be wrong. Right here's the Dunwich Boars. It is a play on the name Dunwich Whores. Somebody or a group of people really like Lovecraft in Bethesda because they're always referencing the Dunwich Whores. By the way, if you have never read the Dunwich Whores, uh, it's by H.P. Lovecraft. It's a good book. It's pretty short, but it's a good read. If you don't like to read, there are plenty of audiobooks. I'm going to take a ton of radiation damage. You don't have to sit here and disarm all this stuff, but I like to for the minuscule experience I get for it. Let's go ahead and lockpick this trunk. Sweet. And then we can grab the hazmat suit. Loot Hugo. Mr. Handy model kit. And then we're going to listen to Hugo's struggle. Guys don't bother me anymore. That's good. I think it's... Read the signs. I think it's time I go back inside the quarry. It's been too long. No, I can't. The guys would never let me in. I could kill them all. No. No, that would that wouldn't be what it would want. It's time to lay down. Yes, of course. It's next to my bed. Grab that up. Sorry, I probably shouldn't have started combat with her or with that raider, but whatever. <coughs> this is going to be a little bit of a tougher area. We're getting into an area where there's tougher enemies. So if you're struggling and you got to turn the difficulty down, I understand. I love this explosive combat rifle. That way if I'm missing, I'm still hitting. Want to take out the turrets that are over here? Excuse me, sir. Can you not sneak up on me? Thank you. There's that turret. I was like, I know it's on that side. This guy is freaking out over there. Come on. Oh my goodness. Am I going to have to come over there and get you? I think I am. You gotta fucking pay for that! Ain't personal, just you or me. I'm going to go over here and kill this guy that is hiding. Be careful, there is another turret right down here. Jesus, there's so many raiders over here. It's quite insane how many raiders they have in this area. Just in the Dunwood Witch Boars.
I don't even know why I'm crouching at this point. Everybody sees me. We're in broad daylight. Yeah. No point in crouching. But we are going to get a sneak bobblehead in here, so that'll be good. That will help our stealth somewhat. Oh my goodness. Be careful with those grenades. You could hurt somebody. Okay, I think that's everybody. Let's head to the bottom here and actually go inside the mine or quarry. It's not really a mine, it's more, more of a quarry. We're gonna crouch, turn on our pit boy lamp. And Fallout 3, you could go to the Dunwich headquarters which was pretty creepy as well. This place is pretty creepy, but not as creepy as the Dunwich headquarters. Stop moving so I can kill you, sir. Or madam. Whoever. Person. Raider. By the way, if you want to read those terminals, they will give you some lore on the Dunwich Wars and how creepy it is. Let's go ahead and heal ourselves with our 330 stim packs. I think I'm stocked up on stim packs. I haven't even been buying stim packs, just looting them alone. It's insane. Take that raider out. Turn on the lights. Again, if you want to read some more lore, you can. There's terminals all over here. Oops, out there. We'll take out Bedlam. Bedlam is the tougher fight. By the way, if you want a mini newt, there's one right over there. Matter of fact, we'll just go over there and get it. Might as well. We're here. So. Oh, good lordy. Really? <laughs> uh, didn't know that the mini nuke was going to be that difficult to get. Right here we have an astoundingly awesome tails. Yes. This is going to make us take 5% less damage from robots. Really good to have. We'll crouch. And now we're going to be fighting ghouls. I guess I just don't trigger the fire anymore with this gun. That's interesting. You'd think it being an explosive, I would. But I'm not going to complain. I almost forgot to turn on the lights here. Well, I mean, I didn't almost forget. I did forget. Every time you turn on the lights, it's going to spawn ghouls. So if you don't want to spawn the ghouls in, just don't turn on the lights. Good lord. 
Poor dog meat. Oof. Poor ghoul. I didn't even mean for that to happen, but not gonna complain. Now we're gonna start hallucinating. Turn the circuit breaker back on. Keep the lights on. This is a very dark area. That's why I'm trying to keep my pit boy light on. Go ahead and turn the circuit breaker on here. Loving the explosive ammo. Let's go ahead and pick up the sneak bobblehead. Yes. This is going to make it 10% harder to detect us. Awesome stuff. We're going to hallucinate again. See people doing some kind of weird ritual to appease the eldritch god. Some cosmic horror shit. Oh. Man. Hey, Tim Stouts. You gotta go. Sorry, bud. Let's go ahead and put on some Radix, and then we're going to swim down until we see a skeleton right here. Go forward, grab ourselves some mini nukes, and then we're going to pick up... Man, I have no clue how to pronounce this word, but I'm going to do my best. Kremmeth's tooth? I don't know. However you pronounce that. If anybody in the comments knows how to pronounce it, you can correct me. I apologize. I am not good with made up words. <laughs> Lovecraft did that a lot in his books or short stories. He did a lot of short stories. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Instead of going straight over here, we're going to take a right, go up top. Take out the ghoul here. There should be another one. Yeah, sleeping right over here. And then we'll come up here, we'll turn on the lights, and more ghouls are going to spawn. I thought that was a ghoul for a second. and turn on the circuit breaker here. Dog meat, you're in the way, bud.
Oh, he's on the ground. I'm like, I know there was another one. Oh, that's not bad. Right here, if you want to grab what's ever in the explosive box, be sure to turn off the tension trigger. Just gonna follow the stairs up. And then we will loot this raider. That way we can get the key off of him and open up the door. Take the elevator down. And then we can stand up. We don't have to crouch anymore. We are done with the Dunwich Boars. Okay, we're going to take a right over here. And then we're going to take the stairs up next to this excavator. Something shooting at me? That's weird. Sounded like something was shooting at me for a second. Alright, we're going to take the path west till we get to this overpass that is completely collapsed. We're going to head north and then be very careful. There is a death claw over here. It is always over here. Probably not a matriarch for you, depending on your level. Was a matriarch for me because I'm level like 58 or 59, something like that. We're gonna continue forward, just follow the overpass. And we will be at the Parson State Insane Asylum. Okay, once we hit the road, take a left. And then before we get in there, we're going to end the video. But before we do, I want to talk a little bit about me maxing out the affinity on the companions. Number one, I maxed out the affinity on McCready. That is pretty easy. What I do is I go to Good Neighbor and I go where I uh, met McCready uh, at the first time I met him in um, the third rail, I go down there, I crouch, I steal a bunch, of, a bunch of stuff, and then I go back to Sanctuary, rest for seven days, and then go back over there and do the thing, same thing over and over and over until I maxed out his affinity. Um, for... Um, damn it. What is his name? <laughs> Hancock. Thank you. Jeez, couldn't think of his name. For Hancock, all I did was get completely naked. Took all my armor off, all my clothes, and I just fast traveled from Vault 111 to Drumlin Diner. And I kept fast traveling back and forth until he idolized me. And super easy way to uh, max out Hancock's affinity. And then for Paladin Dance, we can't max out his affinity just yet because we need to do a quest for the Brotherhood to finish that up. But if you are trying to get his affinity up a little bit, you can always mod weapons and uh, you can get in and out of power armor. All right. Now that that's all been said, I want to start by telling everybody thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video. It really does mean a lot to me. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night, whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.